Nazi. Oh, <laughs> did you? <laughs> I tell you what, I can tell you already, Dickie, if you'd been running this show, none of this would have happened yeah. this week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Kirsty was fantastic. Oh, thank you. Okay. I've been practicing You're getting a bit hot under the collar about Mum not walking down the aisle. Though, I aren't do. You? I was. Is that is that is that naughty for me to get hot? No, under it's the not. I, I mean, I was for it. I, I thought you? it would be a nice gesture because it's always about a family member giving the bride yeah, away. Yeah. And you're right, Victoria did it. She didn't do it once, she did it twice. Now, she could have got one of her sons to do it, mm. but she did it not as queen, but as a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, because Prince Albert died in, what, 1861? And the first one got married in 1866. So it was right to, to, to be done. And a great pity, but you've got to look at Dorian Ragland. She is a very private person. Mm. Uh, you look at what's been happening during the course Megan's of this whole mother. week. Yeah, yeah. Megan's mother. What's been happening during the course of this oh, whole week? She's kept an absolute diplomatic silence. Yeah. She's not got embroiled in it. And I think you're absolutely right. To walk down that aisle, not with just 600 congregants watching, but with billion watching around the world, yeah. it's a very daunting experience for somebody who is very private. Mm -hmm. And they took the heat off her. And she probably... Do you think that's likely, then, that she was asked and...? She was probably asked, and Meghan right. would, have, would, have, would have liked that, but they took the heat off her because but it is a daughter. What do you say, Dickie? I mean, who calls the shots? Yeah. In this instance, Harry and Meghan. Really? really? Oh, no, 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 it would, oh. there would have been no influence from the palace. None? It would have been ah. Harry and Meghan. Really? And they would have discussed it about... They would have discussed it with her mother, because her mother arrived on Wednesday. Uh, they had tea with the Queen... Uh, Harry and Meghan had tea with the Queen yesterday. They got a rehearsal today, probably as we speak now, and they would have discussed it amongst themselves who is the right person to do it. They would have put it to the mother, and Doria would have said, I don't think I can do it. She's a very private person. It's interesting you say Harry and Meghan. Harry, Harry and Harry. Meghan. <laughs> Harry and Meghan. Um, because we always talk about the firm, don't we? Yeah. And, and we have this idea that these mysterious, almost dark forces, that, that the royal family can manipulate everything. Is that the case? It's not a case of manipulation. It, there, there's sort of this feeling on the outside that there are people inside in suits manipulating the whole yeah. thing. The royals do a lot of the things off their own bat. They discuss it. You know, people talk about... There was somebody on TV the other day talking about the way ahead group, that they, they look about the future of the monarchy. That's not what it's all about. It's about coordinating royal visits around the country, so that you don't get, say, Princess Anne going to Birmingham one week and another royal, Prince Andrew, going the following week, mm. that their largesse is spread around the country. And that's what that group is all about. But as far as the wedding is concerned, Harry and Meghan have been calling the shots. Yes, they've been taking advice, because the royal family have been doing these things for years, yes. But based on that... You're interrupting me. I am interrupting you, only because... <laughs> I've got to get this question in. Do you You're think... You're stroking me, too. Oh, no. Do you think... <laughs> Royal, royal correspondent. Don't, don't, don't royal. stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, do you think they have looked after the Markle family, family? Because do you think they've looked after them? Well, there's another kettle of fish altogether. I mean, it's a dysfunctional family. You've got to look at Dad. Dad, we all? Dad actually dropped out of the world in 2011 when he, he retired. He went to live in Mexico, overlooking uh, um, California Bay, became a recluse. And when you become a recluse, you fall out of the world. You forget about where your world operates, how things are done. And he was set up by that sort of rather nasty piece of work, Samantha Grant, the, the daughter, oh. for these paparazzi shots. But Harry hadn't even met him, though. Even well, beforehand, he, that's he, a bit weird, isn't well, it? Well, that's also very difficult. People say, well, why didn't Harry go to Mexico? A royal member of the royal family can't just go to a country. Mm. There are diplomatic hoops to go through. You've got to inform right. the Mexican government. The Mexican government will want to inform their security. Our security will want to go out there and wreck it. And, quite frankly, you've got to say, well, why hasn't Meghan been down there? Mm. And Meghan probably feels very distraught about the way her father is living. Yeah. Because he's living a bit really of a shanty What if really cynical here? That the, I mean, and obviously, if the, if the gentleman's ill, then we need to respect that. Yeah. But given that there has been so much going on in this set-up, photographs, etc., well, do you don't think know. the heart I, surgery I think... story is real? I, I, I would stake my life on the fact that he was probably asked, and he asked, do you want somebody, and he probably said no. He's a private person. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want nannying, and you can't force nannying on, on, on anybody. And as soon as you send somebody down there in a suit or in a safari suit looking vaguely respectable, the media descend. And then the story just yeah. breaks and the whole thing goes pear-shaped. Do you think Princess Diana would be happy now? Oh, she'd be delighted. She'd be de absolutely delighted with, with, with Harry's choice. Mm. Delighted that Harry is actually settling down, found somebody to settle with, found somebody to start a family. Fingers crossed that this one stays uh, mm. completely hitched, unlike his own upbringing. He had two adoring parents, gave him the best of both worlds, 
both Harry and William, unfortunately, they weren't living under the same roof. Because you saw him growing up and you said that he was quite a naughty boy. Oh, God, So yes. do you think they'll be being naughty tonight? What do you think they'll be up to the night before the wedding? Probably once the party's <laughs> over, they'll get naughty. <laughs> Um, no, a bit of drinking, a bit of late night the bar. There'll be a bit of drinking. The, uh, Prince of Wales' the dad is giving a, a dinner for 200 people and afterwards there'll be a bit of a knees up, so the oldest, yeah. the wrinklers will go off to bed and the youngsters yeah. will get on with it. What is quite <laughs> interesting, though, Harry... Harry was quite a naughty boy when he was young. Now, we've all seen those pictures of him sticking his tongue out yeah. and thinking, well, you know, why doesn't the mother do something about it? That was reacting to photographers. Photographers always want a good picture. Yeah, yeah. As big, good pictures sell. So they stood across the road with their lenses poised, sticking their tongues out. Mm. What's a four-year-old going to do? Oh, it's going to stick his back. tongue out as well. Yeah. And they got okay. their picture. Do you know, like I say, we said at the top of the show that it's going to be full of speculation and conjecture. It's been really enlightening and really interesting speaking yeah. to you today, shining a proper light on the events. Dickie Arbiter, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.